انتوا حتقطعوا وتظبطوا صح؟ اوكي كنا نعيش حياتي. انا كذا افكر فين اطالع؟ ببص important ones are the yamas and the niyamas. Okay. What yamas? In spite of the... You need to translate that. Yes. Yamas and niyamas. You're from a medical background and you know you study disease. Yeah. But you don't really study health. Tahina, alhamdulillah. Sure. My name is Nof al Marwai. I'm the president of the Saudi Yoga Committee and president and founder of the Arab Yoga Foundation. I've been practicing yoga for 25 years and... My interest in the wellness field um, started 25 years ago when I was diagnosed with lupus erythematosus and fibromyalgia and affected my health and quality of life. I started practicing yoga and my life really improved and I wanted people to know more about it and to improve their health and that's why I started this movement. So now, welcome to Modern Air Health. And yes, let's talk about wellness. So, how can you define wellness? Your own way of defining wellness. So, for me, wellness is just a feeling of well-being. And of course, there is a lot of definitions of wellness, especially uh, the most known definition of the World Health Organization, the freedom of physical and uh, psychological disease, but in fact, wellness is more than this. It's more than the body and the mind as well. It's about your social life. It's about how do you live your life? What do you really, really um, aspire psychologically, physically, emotionally, uh, even socially? So um, all these aspects of the human being is really important for health. And let's not forget, of course, the spiritual dimension of it. What's the definition of mental well-being? Mental well-being is a vast uh, concept. And we might use this terminology um, casually when we talk about meditation, about wellness, about quality of life, about uh, mental health programs, but scientifically, and, and deeply, this concept is so connected to our lives and every simple detail of our life because um, mental well-being actually, what comes out of your mental well-being is feelings, emotions, and behavior. So if the mental well-being is compromised, you might have disturbing thoughts, you might have uncomfortable feelings, you might actually behave in a certain way that is not really, um, let's call it healthy or normal, because um, what controls actually your reactions and your behaviors and the way you live your life is just these three. You might have a disturbing idea that reflects on your emotions or your psychology in a negative way um, or even a positive way and then it reflects on your behavior and you, you react in a certain way. And this is what we do in yoga. So my major and my background is actually in psychology and mainly clinical psychology. So we study the human behavior and we actually refer all that to the abnormality and the normality in uh, the, the person's thinking and behavior or personality as we call it. So yoga and meditation actually, or the, the yoga philosophy are aligned in the same way. They just use different terminologies. So what we call personality in psychology is the mind yoga. in yoga actually and well, meditation. Let's move to the third question, physical activity. Okay. Physical activity or yoga specifically, how it can improve our health in a physical wise, also in a mental wise? Oh, physical health reflects on the mental health, that's for sure. Because when you move and practice any sports, like if you walk, practice yoga, swim, um, you actually develop the brain chemicals. You release endorphins, you improve the release of serotonin and dopamine as well. 
And these are the neurotransmitters, as we call them, are the brain chemicals that affect your mood, affect your sleep, affect your appetite, affect your pain tolerance. And that includes your physical pain, emotional pain, and of course, what we call the mental pain or the mental stress. Stress. Okay. Environment. We are strongly connected to the environment we are live in. How can we build a healthy environment for a better life in a, in a social wise or in a work wise, in a family wise? So the most important here is the environment. So how can I build a healthy environment? So the environment uh, is a very important topic in yoga. So generally, uh, we live in a society, that's also an environment. Yes. At work, that's also an environment. Wherever we live and we interact with others, it's still an environment. But if we talk about the environment or the caring for Earth and uh, for the environment we live at to preserve it or protect it, that's also part of the yoga philosophy. And there are actually eight limbs or as we call it eight principles of yoga the first two important ones are the yamas and the niyamas okay what <laughs> okay. it's part of you need to translate that <laughs> yes yamas and niyamas it's the ethical codes and uh, let's call it social codes how would you live um uh, in the society how you interact with others how do you Keep a self-discipline. So non-violence is ahimsa, the first uh, yamma. It actually includes the environment. So no violence is allowed toward animals or insects or human beings or the earth. Yeah. You should not hurt the earth even by throwing garbage yes. or uh, picking up plants or, you know, just injuring anything in the environment. And that actually includes taking care of Mother Earth, yeah. as, as we call it, hygiene-wise, development-wise. And of course, um, we know as uh, an important value, actually, is to build our environment. And uh, yes, so sports are really connected to the environment, not only because we practice certain sports outdoors or indoors, but because sports has values. All types of sports have certain values and there are ethical values. And if you look at traditional practices like martial arts or yoga, there is a lot of moral and ethical yeah. uh, philosophies behind them. That goes back to thousands of years. Yeah. So uh, yoga is an important practice. So yoga is not just a sport. Yoga is much more. It's a wellness practice for health and we need it maybe more at this time and there is now uh, a new movement actually even Saudi Arabia this week is hosting uh, a conference that is called uh, sports for development and peace wow. and it's an important subject nowadays in Saudi Arabia is not just the environment yep. the green initiatives uh, you see it's also how to use sports to connect athletes, practitioners, the entire society to the environment and make the person feel responsible. So we have this movement that actually yeah. starts in November, uh, was um, spearheaded by Princess Rima Bint Mander. Yes. It's about um, the, the wild cats and preserving yeah, the white cats. No, I so didn't we all see go it. out on that yeah. day and we walk all over in the kingdom and we walk to raise awareness about uh, wild cats. Yeah. And actually, for the, I'm participating in this for the third year yeah. now and I always pick uh, the leopards yeah. because the Arabian leopards is a very inspiring yeah. animal and they're trying to preserve it. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a beautiful movement and making youth connected to the Thanks environment to the through sports is a very important yeah. uh, principle to teach. Yeah, okay. yeah, like creating a positive environment. Yes. Yeah, a healthy one. So for now, let's take a break for the second part. Okay, so let's move on here. The mindset. How can we build a positive mindset? for a healthier life. 
for a more better water. So, uh, building a healthy mindset requires an effort from the person and requires a change of lifestyle because to build a healthy mindset, you need to break a habit. Yeah. And to break a habit, you really need to have your your thoughts and, and, and your heart into it because it's not easy. Once the brain is conditioned to think or react certain way, that might be not healthy. To change that, you really need to put some efforts in it. So education about wellness is important. Trying new wellness practices and experiences is very important. And most importantly, teaching oneself the acceptance. Yeah. Teaching yourself acceptance yes. is a very important. Forgiveness as well. Right? Forgiveness as well. Forgiveness as one, but I'll tell you, forgiveness is a very important yeah. and a bit difficult practice. We would say uh, forgiveness is easy, but not for everyone. It depends on the uh, uh, the the intensity of the events they yeah. went through, and maybe if there is a trauma. Yes. Yeah. But still, that doesn't mean um, it, it's it's impossible. It's possible, yeah. yeah, it's possible. And acceptance is another thing. When you accept that life has certain events, we, when you accept that you are going to get old, when you accept that you want to go through some tough time, health-wise, uh, professional-wise, social-wise. So um, acceptance makes us able to look into the issue more clearly and try to solve it. Okay. So the quality of life. How can you see the quality of life here in Saudi Arabia and why? Quality of life in Saudi Arabia is um, a very good one because um, honestly, if you look at the general quality of life, it's really um, a good one. And recently it improved even more. Um, and I tell you, there's a lot of advantages um, in Saudi Arabia. It's a diverse community, and I tell you, maybe people abroad don't know this about Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia is really a diverse community. A lot of nationalities live and work in Saudi Arabia, and uh, they exchange with yeah. local people. The culture is mixed, and Saudi Arabian people are open to different cultures. Um, they like to... Um, know more people, know more about other cultures. And when you talk about education, the authorities make sure that the education uh, provided to children in Saudi Arabia is really a good one. And there is a lot of, um, let's say, specifications. So if you talk about schools, if you talk about universities and colleges yeah. in Saudi Arabia, yes, they're, they're good. They're very good. Uh, uh, it's actually international. Yeah. So um, if you talk about the, the business in Saudi Arabia, you see yourself, it's yeah. moving and it's very fast moving. And that it has been like this, but now it's even more uh, fast and more progressive and more. So quality of life in Saudi Arabia, I would say, is really good compared to so many countries, yeah. not only in the region, but internationally. We're going to talk about safety. So Saudi Arabia is the most safest country now exactly. in the whole world. And that contributes yes. to, to the quality of life because you feel safe. Yeah. And you know, in psychology, we say uh, if you don't feel safe, your system is always alert. Yeah. You're under stress even if you don't realize it. Yeah. And you have to take a lot of measures. And that's something I will never, you know find i tell you honestly i traveled so many countries safety here is yeah i've been uh, living in so many countries so i'm telling you like so everybody else is the best so thank you for the answer it's really it's really powerful we got two more questions and we're almost done now. so music how can you see music with the halls like what the relation between music and pulse overall 
when I used to hear annoying music or the music type that I don't like, it disturbs me mentally. And I was looking into it and I found out that you're actually brain waves and brain chemicals get affected by the type of music that you like or you dislike. Yeah. And that's why you see and certain practices during like in spas when they give a treatment, massages, uh, or they give a therapy uh, session, yeah. whatever healing modalities they're practicing, or meditation or yoga, there is always the element of music yes. involved. And it has to be that certain type of music that is the best for the certain modality you're, you're providing. And yes, music is important. It's not only an entertainment. Um, they usually say it it actually uplifts your soul. Yeah. And that's because you as a human being, your brain processes and digests what you get through your perception and yeah. through your senses and it it's... affects you in a certain way. Exactly. So that's why people like to hear what they like. Yeah. Whether it's music, whether it's something they love to hear. Why? Because the ear is an entrance for perception and your mind processes it. And that's how um, music is very important for mental health, honestly. Okay. So we believe in modern era of about fashion can represent culture and art can represent history. So I hear a quote, the way you wear it and the way you think. So how do you see fashion affecting our wellness? Yeah, okay. So... I'm not from the fashion industry, but of course, um, the way you look, the way you dress, the way you feel in your body and your look affects definitely your mood and affects your self-esteem as well. So that actually contributes to your, your quality of life. Maybe you have seen before when somebody is going through a tough time, they would say, especially women. Let's go get you a haircut. Let's go oh, yeah. color your hair. Let's go um, for shopping. And people do that. Actually, Sometimes... I do this. Not just a walk. Yes. <laughs> okay. When Sometimes I'm feeling stressed, I go for shopping. A person went through a hard time, disappeared, and came back looking different, dressing different, and behaving different. So, yeah, it contributes to your mental health and the way you see yourself and the way you want to be seen. Yeah. The way you want to socially reflect on people and interact. So it represents you the way you dress and yes it's about culture but now the world like the fashion you know uh word is all over yeah and all over the globe so people dress almost the same everywhere if not a traditional dress yeah. so yeah it definitely contributes to the feelings of the person and the way we look um some people would say um i i read a book for um, a plastic surgeon who was talking about people's personalities changing after they change the way they look. Yeah. So it's definitely have an effect. Yes. So if you're going to end this uh, interview, okay. So if you're going to end this interview, what are you going to advise people? Like you got a unique personality. So for sure, definitely you have like a unique advice, like on by you based on your experience. So yeah, why do you want to tell people about holes, about wellness, about your experience, to just give them an advice? Yes, I would say uh, wellness is the core of your being because if you don't feel well, if you don't have that wellness within you, it will affect you negatively. And even if you don't see it, yeah. it's going to really, really hurt you. Right. So is wellness like an social or luxury? You're from a medical background and you know you study disease, yeah. but you don't really study health. What we do in the wellness industry that we study and we teach health, yeah. we specialize in health. In the medical field, you have to study the abnormality. Yeah. We study how to make normality even better. Yeah. So that's the, the difference of wellness. And it's undiscovered, honestly, and underrated. I wish more people uh, get into this industry and yep. this field and and the... so Thank you so much for being with me here today. Yeah, I'm truly like feeling so happy. I got this opportunity to meet you in a person. Uh, also, 
that is from you a lot about your experience, about your knowledge, even about uh, your personal uh, thoughts. So yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank yes. you for this beautiful initiative you started at Saudi Arabia. Right, cheers.